Hey, in this video we'll discuss about the purpose of the exhaust gas recirculation system, how it works and what it does for our cars. Stay tuned. This is a Chucky Beat production. The sole purpose of the exhaust gas recirculation system is to reduce nitrogen oxide emissions. It's currently being used on both gasoline and diesel engines. In the case of diesel engines, where we have more nitrogen oxide emissions, the EGR is pretty efficient. When the exhaust gases exit the cylinders, a small fraction of them will return in the intake, and they will be burned again. By doing this, we reduce the nitrogen oxide emissions by up to 30%, which in my opinion is pretty significant. The inconvenient part of the EGR is that it reduces the maximum power output of the engine. An engine has its best performance when it sucks in cold air. When the air is cold, it's denser, so basically we have more oxygen to burn. When the air is hot, everything happens all the way around, so the performance will decrease. We only use a small fraction of the exhaust gases which mix together with fresh air. However, that small fraction of the hot exhaust gases will significantly increase the overall temperature of the entire mixture. I used a scan tool a few years ago to check something on my car and I have seen that the temperature of the air intake was around 48 degrees Celsius where outside were like 20 degrees Celsius. If we would block or remove the EGR system, we would have more power but also more emissions. In diesel engines, especially on those which don't have a DPF filter, if we remove the EGR system, we would see a lot more black smoke at the exhaust pipes. Manufacturers are forced to reduce emissions by all kinds of organizations around the globe, so introducing the EGR was one of them. Now, how does the EGR actually work? Well, you have a valve which closes and opens depending on how much throttle you apply. At full throttle, the EGR system is almost completely closed, whereas at lower RPM, it's pretty much open and it recirculates the exhaust gases. If you would have a bigger engine, a V6, a V8, a V10, etc., you would have an EGR valve on each side of the engine. Also, in high performance engines where temperatures go high, the EGR system also has a cooler. You could see this in the animation. I've seen lots of cars coming in our car shop with EGR problems and check engine fault lights on. Most of them come with loss of power and huge smoke emissions. When you have a huge loss of power, the EGR usually blocks and it sends exhaust gases to the intake all the time. So we have two options to remove this problem. One is to block the EGR system and the second is to remove the entire EGR system or the EGR valve. Also, if you don't want to remove the EGR system, you can remap it. Also, if you don't want to remove the EGR system, you can easily remap it. You can basically tell it when to send the exhaust gases. So basically when to open and close, at which RPM to open and close. So basically I wouldn't recommend you to remove the EGR system, it's a pretty important part of our cars. We also need to protect the environment. But for performance maniacs and car freaks like me, removing the EGR should be a great system to bump in that power output of the engine. If you block or remove the EGR system, you have pretty high chances that you will fail the MOT emissions test. So this is the main purpose of the EGR system. It's pretty simple. It helps us reduce emissions. If you have any questions or anything else to add, please feel free to write down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.